Good morning, everyone. So today's class will be regarding this healthcare delivery system and IPHS. So anyone who knows the full form of IPHS, Indian Public Health Standards, okay? Public Health Standards, Standard. So the public health, the health system, the healthcare delivery system, which is provided in India, how it is uh, functioning, that is what we are going to learn about today, okay? So let's, this is, this, are, this is the index overview of what we are going to learn today. Let's start with the terminologies first. So these terminologies are very important. Like, you may be asked what is the difference between healthcare and medical care, okay? So if we say healthcare, in, in, it includes all the factors, like the factors of food, housing, sanitation, environment, all will be included in the healthcare, okay? And in case of medical care, it will be only the personal service which is provided directly by the physician. So when we go to the uh, OPD, like in the uh, tertiary sector, then you, they come with the chief complaint and the doctor will be prescribing, prescribing according to the chief complaint, the tr treatment which is required. That will be the medical care. But if we consider the other factors like food, house and sanitation environment which is affecting the health, which is causing, leading to that particular chief complaint, then we call it health care. So we need to know this difference. Next is comprehensive health care. This is also very important. So if you are asked to define what is comprehensive health care, then you cannot miss out these words like preventive, promotive, curative health services from womb to tomb. For every individual residing in a defined geographic area, we call it comprehensive health services. So it will be focusing upon the prevention, promotion, curative health services, starting from the once a life is going to be formed till the death. That is what is meant by comprehensive health care. So very commonly asked in the viva uh, also, like comprehensive health care. So when when uh, uh, when we go for the theory viva, most commonly asked is define uh, health, definition of health, define, define epidemiology, define comprehensive health care. These are very commonly asked, so each and every one of you need to know it. Okay, very simple till now. Next, the most important definition, another definition, that is the second bullet, main bullet, that is primary health care. Is, this is also very important. So, every one of us needs to know the definition, how to define it. So, primary health care, it is defined as essential health care, made universally accessible to individuals and acceptable to them, and at the cost the community and the country can afford. So, everyone, please, by heart, this definition, you may be asked long question also, define primary health care, essentials, this, this elements of primary health care, principles of primary health care, this can be a long question, okay? So we need to know this defi definition, that is essential health care, that universally accessible to individual and acceptable to them and at the cost the community and the country can afford. So this is the definition. Next, the elements of primary health care. So there are eight elements. This is the mnemonic. Mnemonic itself is the elements. So E will stand for education. L, instead of L, here we are going to uh, remember as immunization. Again, another E will be standing for endemic. Then M will be standing for maternal and child health. Okay, then another E will be the essential drugs. N will be the nutrition, T will be the treatment of the common diseases and injuries, and S will be the sanitation. This is how we will remember in, uh, in the mnemonic form elements of primary health care. So, which education? Education concerning the preventing health problem and the methods of prevention and controlling them. So, if, if there, uh, for example, in the, uh, in the community, if the people are aware, if the community is, are aware like what are the uh, basic signs and symptoms for diarrhea, uh, dehydration with because of, uh, cause of, uh, because of diarrhea, then if they are uh, being provided the education, like if such and such symptoms developed, if what are the basic measures which they have to take up, the home remedies which they can take up before coming to the healthcare centers, 
such kind of education should be pre, uh, should be given to the community this is one element okay next second element promotion of food supply and proper nutrition food supply and proper nutrition which is provided by various schemes and programs at various age group level we already know then third is adequate supply of water and basic sanitation fourth is maternal and child health including family planning immunization against major infectious diseases okay we know it in the immunization schedule then prevention and control of locally endemic diseases so based upon the different geographic area there will be certain diseases which are common in that particular area so how to prevent it how to control it these things should be given such kind of education should be given to the community so if that particular uh, geographic area is prone to malaria then the use of mosquito nets how to use the chemicals okay how uh, uh, the personal protection all these things should be given the education should be given to the community then next is appropriate treatment of common diseases and injuries then next is provision of essential drugs essential drugs so these are the eight elements of primary health care so we already defined in previously that primary health care is the essential health care made universally accessible to the individuals everyone should be accessible to it they should be acceptable it should be acceptable to them and at the cost the community and the country can afford so it should be at the cost the cheapest cost where the community and the country can afford so if you are asked this eight elements if you are asked to give an example of each of the point then you should get to you should be able to um, give the example based upon this definition that is accessible to the individual acceptable to them also and the cost should be affordable so like education like how i already told like uh, regarding the dehydration education like simple ors or home based liquids fluids which can be given to them which are the fluids which will be avoided during the diarrhea those kind of education you can give as an example then promotion of food supply and proper nutrition that we can give an example like if it is in the infant based upon the imnci what are the uh, nutrients which should be included in the food of the people uh, infant okay carbohydrate protein fat and which are the uh, uh, food which are rich in carbohydrate protein fat this can be given as an example for the number 2 element then adequate supply of water and basic sanitation okay so uh, let's start from the fourth element the fourth element maternal and child health including family planning so we have learned from the plan family planning uh, classes what are the methods the terminal and the the terminal methods then the spacing methods and those services which are acceptable to acceptable to the individuals okay so this kind of met, uh, what are the methods there are various methods so which are the methods acceptable to them that should be provided okay then uh, this one immunization immunization against major infections no need to explain we already know nis then prevention and control of locally endemic diseases that we already get the example of malaria then appropriate treatment of common diseases and injuries common diseases and injuries will include this ARI diarrhea same thing again repeated which are very uh, very common in the uh, under 5 children then provision of essential drugs essential drugs also same thing like which includes the uh, treatment for the diarrhea ARI then all those paracetamol and all those things will be included under the essential drugs so these are the elements of primary health care you you have to uh, you can remember through the mnemonics and you can give an example one one each if you are asked in the exam what uh, to define primary health care then the elements of primary health care next coming to the principles of primary health care so principles there are four principles so sometimes we get confused when we are asked what are the elements of primary health care what are the principles of primary health care please do not make please do not make the mistake elements we can remember from the um, mnemonic of elements itself and regarding principle there are only four principles which include equitable distribution community participation intersectoral coordination appropriate technology okay so here also we need to know the basic idea and give one one example each then you can write your own in the exam so by equitable distribution 
we mean that based upon the need the services should be made available okay based upon the need so there is a difference between equal and equity okay equal means 50-50 okay but equity means according to the need like if in uh, if there are two villages village a and village b then you are going to provide some family planning methods which you are going to provide to the village a and village b so if it, if the number of the target uh, couple in the village a and village b are uh, uh, and you have 100 100 of this family planning methods then when you distribute this in these two villages you have to distribute according to the equity according to the need okay so by according to the need we mean that if how many target we need to first know how many target couples are there in village a then how many target couples are there in village b so if there are more target couples in village a then you will provide more if there are 100 then you are going to provide 70 to the village a and 30 to the village b like that that is known as the equitable distribution that is based upon the need and if it is equally then irrespective of the irrespective of the number of the target couple which is available in the two villages you will be providing directly 50 50 to each of the villages okay so that is the difference so when we are asked equitable distribution equitable distribution of the primary health care meaning that in india we know that the population of india majority are residing in the rural area okay rural it is divided into rural and urban so I hope you all know the criteria for division of an area which is uh, whether the, this area is belonging to the urban or rural that you need to know. And another thing is you have to know that 70% of Indian population is residing in the rural area and the remaining 30% is it is an approximate value. Okay, So remaining 30% will be in the urban area. So if it is about the healthcare delivery system, the healthcare system, the facilities which you are going to provide, then by equitable distribution, we have to make sure that majority of the health facilities are available to the rural area, right? Because 70% of the population are residing in that area. That is known as the equitable distribution. But what is happening in the current scenario? We have many of the private hospitals and many of the health facilities in many in the urban major, um, uh, this metropolitan cities mainly in the center okay so this is not an equitable distribution so if according to the principles of the primary health care there should be an equitable distribution that is according to the need first point second point community participation so when we talk about community participation it is not only the health care workers who are going to provide the services that principle uh, that that uh, that uh, elements uh, which is included in the primary health care that is not provided only by the health care workers but the participation by the community is of major importance like asha is an example okay the next is and the village volunteers there might be volunteers which are coming up like in the covid this COVID pandemic uh, scenario also we can see that in the village village areas there are community the volunteers are coming out and they are helping in the distribution of the food or taking care in the quarantine center and all this is one example of the community participation not only the healthcare workers but the volunteers from the community are also coming up right then the third principle intersectoral coordination intersectoral coordination meaning that not only the health sector, but the other sectors also need to be coordinated. So you may be asked to give an example. So you can give many examples like agricultural sector, then uh, PhD sector, okay? Then all this will be included. Like agricultural sector because they will be providing the nutrition. Then PhD because they will be providing the water. So sanitation was one of the elements, okay? Food supply and water sanitation was one of the elements. So that is another sector and those things can be given as an example of the third principle the fourth principle include, includes appropriate technology so in appropriate technology it means that we may be having many 
highly equipped instruments may be available but the thing is that if the individuals or if the uh, country is not able to afford it then it is of no use okay so what we need is what the country and the uh, what the country or the uh, what the community or the country can afford that was the definition the ending of the definition right so but that particular technology should be scientifically based okay it should be cheap and it should be scientifically based for example ors ors is very simple it doesn't take it is very cheap it doesn't take much uh, this thing uh, it doesn't consume much of the money resource uh, for preparing uh, for uh, producing it and also preparation at home level is also very easy so this is one of the example of appropriate technology okay ors is one of the example so when you are asked an exam please give an example of each of this and you have to know the meaning that's all so if you are uh, you can be asked the definition principles and the elements okay now let's come to the healthcare delivery model this is the model of india so we have here in the column we have input then the healthcare services what are the services to be given to the people healthcare system through what system the services will be provided and the outputs output means the result the changes in the health status so in the input we have the health status or the health problem okay whatever problem we are having communicable non communicable whatever that will be included in the input next is resources so in the resources we have to know four m's okay man money okay then material then minute okay man will be the manpower okay money we need money also then material that definitely we need the materials then minute means the time okay we need time so these are the resources so if you are asked about the what are the resources in the healthcare delivery system you have to tell about this four m's for easy remembrance now the healthcare services what are the services to be provided through this input will be in the form of curative preventive promotive okay next is healthcare system it can be provided through the public through the private voluntary services indigenous form of system so these are the four healthcare system which are available in india public will be through the government private will be the private then voluntary will be like the ngos then indigenous we know ayush okay these are the system which is being providing the healthcare services the curative preventive promotive services which will be provided and we'll see the changes that will be the output so this is uh, the healthcare providers in india that is under the state government it, under the central government and the non government so the providers can be divided as state level central and the non government under the state le state government we have the public health department medical education department municipal administration non allopathic system okay these are under the state government okay then under the central government we have ministry of health and family welfare ministry of ayush and other ministries are included like other ministries like railways labor mines shipping steel etc these are also included then next is the non government that is private hospitals private practitioners ngos this are the non government okay these are according to the level next coming to the public health care delivery system so we can divide this public health care delivery system into national level state level okay so first coming to the national level under the ministry of health and family welfare we have this dghs central health services okay these things will be there included then under the under the state state the department of health and family welfare we will have the head secretary state director this will be there then at the district level middle level management link overall control responsibilities will be of the of the particular district will be taken up at the district level not of much important but this one is very important public health care we can divide according to the area that is as i told already urban area rural area okay so what we know is that this rural area three tier system 
okay bhc this uh, for primary secondary and tertiary level which we already know sub center and bhc will be in the primary like that we already knew from before so that one is the three tier system which is being practiced in the rural area and please do not forget that for the urban area also there is healthcare delivery system okay so we will come to this urban area later let's come to this rural area first this rural area we have the best at the grassroots level the first center which comes in contact with the community is this sub center like like this uh, more this is the most peripheral contact between the pri primary health care system and the community okay and in the sub center there will be one health care worker and anm okay so anm is the head no doctors are there in the sub center very commonly asked in the exam and most common mistake we make okay in sub center no doctor only anm anm is the head population cover in the uh, uh, population covered is 5000 and in the hilly difficult terrain area it will be 3000 please you have every one of you need to know the population which is covered by each of the centers okay and who are present in each of the center we need to know so in the primary health care the next level that is uh, it has got this is this is the area this is the center from where the medical officer or the doctor is posted so if you are asked which is the first level where the community comes in contact with the doctor it will be phc okay because the doctors are being posted in the phc okay most peripheral part and uh, uh, if you are asked which is the uh, facility where the uh, community comes in contact with the facility, the healthcare facility, then it will be sub center. Okay, so please do not forget this uh, point that some sub center it is run by the ANM and the healthcare worker. And in case of PHC, there will be doctor present there, and the paramedical staff will be there. And the population covered by one PHC is 30,000 population, and in difficult terrain, hilly and difficult terrain area, it will be 20,000 population. So under one PHC, how many subcenters might be there? Around six subcenters might be there. Okay, because thirty thousand, no, thirty thousand. So if we divide it, then we can cover around six. Right. That is why. Okay. The next is community health center. Community health center. We have uh, this community health center, which is also known as the first referral unit. We will come to that first referral unit. And under community health center, the population cover is 80,000 to 1.2 lakhs. One community health center will cover this population, meaning that under one CAC, there can be four PACs, okay? And the specialized services, okay? Specialty, specialized services will be uh, available in the community health center, okay? Only the, uh, that is the difference. So every one of us, we need to know. And another thing very important, based upon our uh, Meghalaya, we have to know, like for Negrims, where is, where, when you become an intern, where you will be posted will be the community health center. Okay, Bhorimbong. So Bhorimbong, this uh, community health center will be there. And under this community health center, since it is a uh, hilly region, we have three sub-centers. So, Okay, we have three sub centers under the variable PHC, uh, sorry, CAC. Okay, so you have to know this also because you can be uh, it can be asked in the viva in order to know regarding the uh, regarding your own college also. Sometimes it is asked, but this is just the health statistics. Okay, so let's come to IPHS public health standards regarding the sub center. So according to the IPHS. A sub center. What are the services and what are the facilities should be that should be available at a sub center according to IPHS? That is what we are going to see now. So sub center can be divided into two types: type A and type B. So the main thing is that in type B, delivery can be conducted. Okay, and in type A, usually no or occasional delivery. That is the basic difference between the type A and type B sub center. It, your viva question may be like uh, 
like which is the first healthcare delivery system which comes in contact with the community, then your answer will be sub-center. Then next, you can they can ask you what is the population covered by a sub-center. Then you have to answer that again. Then what are the types of sub-center you know, that A type B, what is the difference between type A and type B. Then you have to know that the deliveries are conducted in the type B, no, delivery, no or occasional delivery. So these things you have to know it. Okay, next. Okay, okay. these are the services which are provided under the sub-center should, that should be provided according to the IBHS standard, okay? Services to be provided, this, then uh, physical, then monitoring, then uh, manpower, quality assurance, maintaining the record of the particular sub-center, okay? These are the services, like maternal child health services, okay? Safe abortion, family planning, contraception. For example, property insertion that should be available at the sub center. AM can do it. Okay. And then, uh, like providing the uh, other barrier contraceptive methods to be made available, emergency contraceptive methods. Okay. Curative services, basic curative services that, that should be made available. Then, adolescent health care. Then, uh, school health services, water and sanitation, outreach services. By outreach services, we mean the village health day, okay? That's all nutrition day, village health and nutrition day. Usually once a week, this uh, from the sub-center people, uh, the a &M accompanied by the uh, ASHA and uh, sometimes the medical officer who is posted in the PAC where that particular sub-center is covered can also accompany and they will go, go to a particular area like the club or like in a com uh, like in a community hall or of the particular village and they will provide services out there okay like the services and health talks can be given there also so those kind of outreach services village health and nutrition day so outreach services should be match uh, these are the services which to, which is to be provided by the sub-center. The national health program, all the programs will be included, IDSP, we already know. We already had a class of IDSP also. So what form will be available at the sub-center? Which form? There are four, uh, three types of form. Any idea? Form S. So please read up IDSP. Form S will be available at the sub-center. Medicinal herbs. Plantation will also be there, vital events. Vital events means the morbidity, mortality of the particular diseases then regarding the all those uh, record maintenance will be there. So this is about the manpower and the duties. So manpower and the duties like for sub-center A, sub-center B. As we already know that in sub-center B, deliveries are conducted. So the manpower will be a more in case of the sub-center, okay? A and M, two are required health worker, one male health worker will be required, may or may not be, the star mark indicates, asterisk indicate. Then Safai Karmachari, one full-time, and in case of sub-center, it will be part-time, okay? Outsourcing. So duties of this A and M, this will be taken in another class, so as since we know the services provided in the sub center, so this those services which is provided, who are responsible for conducting the those services will be taken in another class. So I'll skip this point. Okay, Asha very important can be asked in short note also. There are points which are included. Who can be an Asha? How many population to cover? And what are the roles? What are the functions? Okay. This one. Okay, let's, let's come to the next one. IPHS PHC. In case of primary health care, so again in pri primary health care, there are two categories. That is type A and type B. Am I audible, students? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So categorization, primary health care categorization, it can be again divided into type A and type B. Type A again, here in primary health centers, what happens is that deliveries will be conducted, definitely, in both the types. But the thing is that the number of deliveries conducted in type A will be less than 20 per month, and it will, if it is more than 20, then we call it type B. That is the basic difference. And we know that this is primary health center, is the first center, health center, where doctors will be available. Okay? 
So these are the services. Or every services will be made available only. Whatever you write, it will be correct. Okay. Like first is the maternal health, uh, and child health, like the antenatal care, the basic antenatal checkup. We what are the things to to be done? Then intranatal checkup, postnatal. Okay, because the deliveries are also conducted. Newborn care. Okay, essential newborn care corner. Then resuscitation, care of the child. Okay, then all the schemes. Then MTP. All will be conducted. This is about the maternal and child health. Next is nutrition and adolescent. Nutrition, school health, then adolescent health, adolescent friendly health clinic. Okay, so. I, I think we visited the PAC. Which PAC we visited? So we might have seen this adolescent friendly health clinic also. We have seen it, right? Which PAC you have visited? This can be asked in the exam also. So you need to know which PAC you have visited. Okay. Then safe drinking water like disinfection, promotion of sanitation, and all the health programs will be included under the IDSP, uh, sorry, under the PHC, like RNTCP, now name has been changed, NLP, IDSP, all will be included, and VBDCP and the other programs all will be included under the PHC. Okay? And referral services, from if, the, if a particular case uh, from the sub-center, they can also refer to the PHC or otherwise if it is not able to treat in the PHC, they will refer it to the higher center. Okay, and monitoring and supervision also. Like whether the ANM, whether the health workers in the sub-center, in the particular sub-center which is covered by that particular PHC, whether they are doing it or not, that is being monitored and supervision, what are the changes to be done, how Super, how, how, how they have to conduct it, those services, this will be done by the PAC at the PAC level. Okay, and uh, there will be laboratory, basic laboratory services will be also available. I am sure you all must have visited the laboratory services, like when you visit Maulai Mauro and then uh, Ding Paso PAC also was, uh, we visited there also. So those uh, basic laboratory services which are available on uh, in those PHC, okay, we need to know. The next is regarding the manpower. Manpower is, one thing we have to know is type B, more than 20, type A, less than 20 deliveries are conducted per month. So definitely the number of the manpower in the type B will be more. Medical officer, essential and desirable too. Okay, Ayush, medical officer will be there, data entry oper operator will be there. Then pharmacist will be there, then healthcare worker, female health assistant, okay. Then uh, this health educator will be there, lab technician will be there since there is specific laboratory, lab technician, sanitary worker. So these are the things, basic things which we can write by our own if we understand it, okay. So, but uh, and another thing you have to add, uh, you have to add this medical officer and medical officer of Ayush. And the work of the medical officer and will be everything that we have to know it, uh, which uh, will be taken in the next class, like the, everything, the curative, preventive, promotive, and as well as monitoring, supervision, and all those programs, health programs, will be under, looked after by the uh, medical officer, health educator, work, then uh, health assistant, this will be taken later. Now coming to the IPHS of the CHC, Com Community Health Center. So this Community Health Center is the secondary level out of the three tier. Okay. So here in the Community Health Center, we call it first referral unit also. And when we say first referral unit, these three major points should be made available. Then only we will say that this particular center is a first referral unit, availability of the surgical intervention, newborn care, blood storage facilities, very important. This is meant for conducting CS, okay, cesarean section. So if the delivery which is, uh, so the cesarean section, in order to conduct a cesarean section, delivery by cesarean section, what happens is that we need a gynecologist, 
right? We need anesthesiologist and then we need pediatrician. And uh, these are the manpower which are required and among the materials what we require, blood storage facilities is also required. Please do not get confused with blood storage and blood bank, okay? It may not be blood bank, but if we have the storage facility, blood storage facility, then we can call it uh, first referral unit. So these are the things which are should which should be made available. Then only we will call it first referral unit. So there are many community health centers in the real scenario, like gynecologist is available, but there is no anesthesiologist posted out there. So gynecologist himself or herself cannot conduct the CS, so it cannot function as a first referral unit. Or all the manpowers are available, but no blood storage facility is available. Like that. Or gynecologist and anesthesiologist available, pediatrician not available. Like that, this happens. So that those kind of health facilities cannot be called as first referral unit, but according to the IBHS standard, what we want is all the three should be made available. Then only we will call it a first referral unit. So this means that in sub-center we do not have doctor, in BAC we have doctor, and in CAC we have specialist, right? So these are the manpower, okay? Okay, so block medical officer, public health specialist, public health nurse, general surgeon, physician, okay, then uh, gynecologist, pediatrician, anesthetist, dental surgeon, okay, GDMO, okay, MO Ayush, staff nurse, pharmacist, pharmacist of Ayush, lab technician should be there, ophthalmic assistant, radiographer, all these things will be there, okay. So these are the main power. <clears throat> okay, next is uh, we have completed up to CAC. Next is district hospital or sub district hospital. So, sub district or sub divisional hospital, then the district hospital, then uh, these are also functioning as first referral unit. If at times, if the CAC is not functioning as the uh, first referral unit, so the population covered, as we already know that, that uh, we learn about how much population is covered by the uh, sub-center, we have specific, specific number, right? So sub-center, we have 5,000 or 3,000, then 30,000 or 20,000 in case of PHC, then 80 to 1.2. So when we talk about district, when we say about population, then it will vary, okay? So what we have to know is, in India, district, for defining a district, it doesn't mean that this many number of population will define a district. Some In some state, the district may be very large also. So that is why we do not have a specific population written out here. So you have to know that uh, when you are asked how, many, how much population is covered by a district hospital, then you have to know that that particular district is called, that particular population of, the, of that particular district is covered by that district hospital, okay? Like, for example, in case of Meghalaya, in case of northeastern states, one district is very small, okay? But if we talk about the uh, central India, like in UP, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, one district is very big, right? So that is what I mean to say. So that one district hospital will be there, and that part for that particular district, the population covered by that, popula uh, that particular district will be the uh, population, okay? This is about the three tier system, okay? PH subcenter, PHC, CHC, district or sub district, and district hospital. These are available in the rural setting. So when we talk about the urban settings, urban healthcare delivery system, we always tend to forget this. So please do not forget this. Under the public health system, under the government of in, uh, government of India, we have health facilities, healthcare facilities, which is available in the urban also. Okay, so based upon the population, we have this, uh, this one, healthcare facilities. Like urban community health centers, it will cover how many population? For every 2.5 to 5 lakh in case of metro, metropolitan city, okay? And in case of urban PHC, 50,000 population. Every 50,000 population, one urban PHC should be there. PHCs are also available in the urban areas. That we call it urban PHC, urban CHC. Okay, and case of uh, ASHA, we have we have all we should know that one ASHA covers one thousand population in the rural, but in the urban we have one thousand to twenty five thousand population covered by one ASHA, one ANM, 
10,000 population, okay, 20 to 50 population by Mahila Arogya Samiti. So this is about the urban healthcare. And the services which will be provided in the PHC, CHC will remain the same like that of the rural, okay. Like in the PHC, MO will be there, okay, medical officer, general medical officer will be there, CHC specialist will be available, okay. And regarding uh, above CIC, too, we have the uh, either the medical colleges or the tertiary sectors will be available. That is why we have not included it, okay, in case of urban healthcare facilities. Okay. This is about the private sector. This is just the data about the private sector. That those are the public health sectors, okay. Now, coming to the private health sectors, private health sectors, these are the, just the data. So we have one thing called PPP, okay, PPP, Public-Private Partnership. What happens here is that in Public-Private Partnership, public will be the government organizations, okay, private will be, mainly they will be focusing upon the profit or non-profit or voluntary sectors will also be available. And when this public and the private, they work together collaboratively, then we call it Public-Private Partnership, okay. So... The main objective of why we are having this public-private partnership is regarding the coverage, improvement in the particular areas like in the surgical field or in the uh, facilities which should be made available then to the poor community like the specialist kind of facilities, exchange of skills also, resource mobilization, strengthening of the health system, then range of services will be expanded, then risk sharing, community ownership will be there, okay? So sometimes it is not possible for the community to, uh, that they will be able to afford the private sector all the time. But, and again, if they go to, the, so since they are not able to afford what happens, they go to the public sector. So at times what happens is that in the public sector, the facility which is provided may not be up to the mark but if we have this ppp system what happens is that at the lower cost the community will be made available these services the specialty specialist kind of services will be made available to them okay so these are the objectives under the ppp so if you are asked about the example of ppp model in the health sector these are some of the examples of the uh, model okay ppp model like in Raichu, we have Rajiv Gandhi Super Specialty Hospital, which is functioning as a PPP. So, and it is a tertiary care. So, being a tertiary care, they will have all the facilities what a tertiary care should be made available. But, and this will be at the cost the community can afford. Okay? So, Government Apollo Hospital will be in a joint venture partnership. So, if we go along to the Apollo Hospital, it will be too costly. But if we go to this particular tertiary care, Okay, then it will be at the cost the community can afford. Okay, government of Arunachal and Karuna Trust also. Together, we have this rural healthcare delivery and management of the PAC. These are some of the examples, okay. And in the lab drugs, lab, lab drugs supply and diagnostic services also, this is Hin Labs is one of the examples. Okay, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and HLL Care Limited, this is one of the examples in case of lab drug supply about the PPP. Next is indigenous system of medicine that we know already, Ayush. You have to know the full form of Ayush. Okay, so then this, there are voluntary agencies which we already know, knew from before. Okay, so what happens? We have to know about the, some of the names of the uh, voluntary agencies which are available in India. Like Indian Red Cross Society, very, very, uh, famous, famous, right? So, relief work, armed forces, family planning will be some of the services which is provided under this. Okay, these are some of the name of the voluntary services which are available in India. Okay, you have to name uh, at least two, three, four, you need to know, or you can be asked two, three, four for the viva purpose, or you can be asked as a long question, like, like regarding the IPH standard, what are the services to be. Uh, IP, according to the IPHS center, uh, IPHS standard, what are the services to be made available at the rural setting? Okay, and at the uh, um, voluntary services to be made available like that, you can, you can, uh, the question can come. Then this 
if you know three four names then you can write it up okay so this is for today's class i hope you understand if you have any doubt you can ask me you have my mail address also you can ask me later anytime okay thank you